Ross, it's great to see you back in the Formula One paddock. 2017 marks the start of a new era for Formula One, and it's going to be an exciting season, isn't it? I hope so. Uh, obviously, with the uh, new cars and new rules, we need to see how the, all the cars perform and what effect that has. But I think it's an exciting um, season for the new, the new philosophy, the new ideas that uh, we're hoping to bring into Formula One. You've now had a chance to see the cars up close. What are your first impressions? I think as a, as, a, uh, as a racing car, it looks more exciting. I think the general proportions of the car are better, uh, much faster, uh, pretty impressive in the corners. And the drivers I've spoken to have told me they're physically pretty uh, challenging, which is what was uh, wanted. Uh, as always with new regulations, there's a few little hiccups. I mean, we've got the, uh, the unpopular shark's fin on the back. Uh, and I think in time we need to address those because uh, part of the, the objective of the new rules was to produce uh, more exciting looking cars. So we don't want to spoil it with, with peripheral bits that take away from that. But that's normal with new regs. You mentioned the shark fin. Have there been any designs that have caught your eye in particular? The double T-wing that Mercedes have been running, for example? I haven't had that much time to look at things that, that closely. I've, been watch I've got an office along here, so I've been watching them out the window. Um, but, you know, those are all the consequences of new regulations and they're not intended. Uh, so I think all the unintended consequences over time we need to iron out and uh, get the things looking a little bit more pure. You mentioned speed. We've seen the lap times falling away this week already. That's surely something that the fans can be excited about. Yes. I mean, that was the whole purpose of the regulation change, to, to really step up the uh, performance of the cars. I think there's a combination of things that you know, you're always trying to achieve. And there's speed, which is exciting in itself, but there's also the ability to race, which is an open point at the moment. We need to see, once the season starts, with the tyres we have now, with the rules we have now, um, how well the drivers can compete with each other, because that's an important element as well. Moving ahead to Melbourne, what else can the fans expect from Formula One this year? I think, quite honestly, from a technical and sporting sense there's not a lot of changes i mean there's a you know there's a process we have to go through to make those changes so i think there'll be a lot of discussion during the year about how we can improve uh, the show from that side but i think in terms of the experience and the information that we supply the fans uh, the social media side there's a whole uh, side of form on which we can react quite quickly in terms of trying to improve the experience and uh, uh, the show um, from the cars and from the racing perspective, then I think the stability is important in that. So there won't be any major changes there. When you look at the rules and regulations and see how they've played out with the cars this year, is there anything that you would like to enhance or further develop or even change? I think the only, the only point I would make is, is, let's say, the process at which the rules are agreed. I think um, you know, what I'd like to see in the future and where we want to play a part is in making sure the objectives are very clearly defined. And so what are the ideas that, uh, what are the objectives of these regulation changes? If you're gonna make a regulation change, what's the objective? And then making sure that there's a process that where, where those objectives are, are sure to be achieved. And so what we're gonna do within FOM, we're gonna have our own capacity to judge those things. So we're gonna have a small group of engineers, small group of specialists who can participate with the teams and help um, make sure that we achieve those objectives and uh, we have a better process behind the regulations. You've been quite vocal in the past and more recently about DRS. Is this something that you see changing, not necessarily for this season, but maybe for 2018 and onwards? I think uh, we have to look at the whole uh, topic of overtaking and racing and how the cars can race each other and how the cars can overtake each other. And yeah, I would prefer that to be uh, uh, let's say, a normal process rather than enhanced by something like DRS. But DRS was a solution because we had a problem at the time. So I don't think we should rush into taking DRS off. But what I'd like to see is a better long-term uh, solution to car design, which enables us to not need DRS. We had a marathon season in 2016, one less race for 2017. The teams have to compete an awful lot. You've mentioned uh, potentially a non-competitive race weekend as an option. How do you see that playing out? Well, it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty far out idea, to be honest. But, you know, I was brought up in a, a early stage of my career where we did quite a lot of non-championship races. So at that stage, 
yeah, a, a circuit could uh, propose to hold a race and as long as it could meet the commercial criteria we could have a race there and the teams could fit it in. And of course the calendar is very tight. I think the point I was trying to make is that we have very little opportunity to experiment with format and experiment with the approach we take. So if we want to try a new uh, qualifying system or we want to try a new race system or we want to try uh, other things, uh, perhaps static starts after a safety car for instance, those things, it would be ideal in a non-championship race to, to trial those things and experiment and see whether they work and if the fans like them and if they're positive to Formula 1. You know, just to create that environment where we can experiment because in you know, in engineering, my background, you experiment, you research, you try things. The cars which are here have had a massive amount of research before they hit the track. And yet we're contemplating sometimes changing the shape of Formula One without trying it and seeing if it works or not. It's only a matter of weeks now until Australia. Will we see you back here between now and then? Uh, I don't plan to. I, um, I've uh, wanted to see the cars run. Uh, I want to just get a flavour for where, where it is, but it's quite a lot of work I've got to do as well. And, and uh, I get quite distracted when I come to the track, so uh, I'll probably be in the office in that period. One of the biggest changes we've seen over the past few days is Formula One opening up social media to the teams. How's that been received? Well, it seems to have been uh, very well received by uh, all the people involved. And, and I think one of the great things with Sean Bratches and Chase Carey, they come from that environment. For them, that's perfectly normal. Uh, for us, it's abnormal because of the, the way we've run Formula One uh, in recent years. So, uh, and they've got lots of ideas like that. Some will work and some won't. I mean, they know that themselves. Uh, but we're taking a fresh approach. And uh, so I think uh, the great thing about those things is they can be trialed and if they don't work, we can change them. Unlike you know, changing the format of a race where you have to live with that for the whole season. So uh, I think there's a lot of new initiatives going to happen this year and it's, uh, they are the things that we can introduce short term and get them, get them working.